$25 from Cold Candor. Wow, so much nostalgia in one game. I managed to dupe some gold, so what better to do with it than donate it? Thanks, Funkmaster, for showing me that running around for 45 minutes with a bow on my sorcerer is totally not the way to kill the butcher. Mega Dodo donated $100. Great to see Diablo at AGDQ. I've played Diablo 2 way more than I'd like to admit, and watching it get destroyed will be an absolute treat. Much love to everyone involved with this great event, so stay a while and listen and kill the animals. Oh, that's a problem? That might happen during the run. <laughs> yeah, that sometimes accidentally happens. Okay, there may be, there may be some minor adjustments that need to happen during the run then. <laughs> Stranger, mm -hmm. I'm not surprised to see. Uh, yeah. Is this name incentive, by the way? Yep. They they came through in spades with four thousand four hundred twenty-two dollars. Wow. 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 And Bonnie was was a. Uh, Second place with one thousand dollars, one thousand eighty-two dollars. So, lots of support for that one too. Oh. Okay. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So, uh, welcome everybody. My name is Mr. Lama SC. Uh, this is a Diablo two run. So um, evil, the, evil. the first thing that I kind of want to talk about is it's going to be a very random run, right? Uh, kind of like Diablo 1, but a little bit more randomness. Um, so there is just all of the maps, all of the items, all of the boss groups, or most of the boss groups. Um, every, everything's a majority of it. It's going to have some sort of random seeding, uh, some sort of random generation. And so there's going to be a lot of exploring, a lot of things like that throughout this run um, that I'm just going to kind of have to deal with and whatnot. So my first goal right here is I have the sorceress and I just want to get her to roughly level two and I want to complete the Den of Evil right there which is going to give me a quest um, to go ahead and respec my character. So later on in the game I'll be able to change her skills up completely. Um, what I'm also doing at this time is trying to, like I said, get level two and I'm trying to find um, just some sort of items right now uh, while I do that to sell for enough gold. So we're probably a little short on the gold right there. Uh, maybe that can drop something. It'll be close. It'll be close. Um, the reason I want to have a little bit of gold is that'll allow me to uh, have enough gold for mana potions to go into the Den of Evil. And right there, that, those throwing knives are actually huge. So those throwing knives are going to be worth 480 gold. I only need about 250, roughly, to take down there. Um, so that's what I'm just going to be kind of concerned with at that point. So right now I'm just going to go to the Cold Plains, uh, get that waypoint, and this allows me to kind of double back really quickly. So there's that 480, there's all that stuff, it's all those. And now I can buy some mana potions and have enough for some stamina potions as well. Um, which is a nice change to Diablo 1, sorry Funk Master, uh, is you can actually run in Diablo 2 when you have stamina. So that kind of is a necessary evil. You realize we walk at the same <laughs> speed you run, right? <laughs> it just feels so slow, though, doesn't it? So I want to get level two down oh. here. 
Um, that's going to be kind of the first thing, and that's going to let me get Charge Bolt, which will give me uh, the spread, and this is going to be the best damage that I can have um, starting out in the early game. So even if, even if uh, you're going to go for a different spec later on, a lot of people would be like, all right, I want to be a uh, Fire Sorceress. Um, and some people even speed ran a little bit with Fire Sorceresses. The initial part of the game, you're still going to want uh, Charge Bolt. It's just, it's just so good, and it gives you that AoE um, that nothing else gives. The unfortunate part is, it does kind of spread all over the place. And these shamans are a little annoying. Uh, so I also want to find essentially as few of those as possible down here. Because um, A, they don't give a ton of experience. There's a lot of them. And uh, they can respawn as well. The, the, the shaman will actually respawn the little minions. Um, and so it's one of those, to complete this quest, I have to kill every single character in this den. And so if they're respawning them when I don't see or something, then I have to go run all the way back to the front. And basically at the very end, uh, I'd have to run around this den of evil until I found it. Um, so one thing that I can kind of start to note I said maps are random, um, but they're not always 100% random. Some of them are randomly generated uh, with certain like tile sets, essentially. Some of them are, um, there's a random one picked from a grouping, and that would be, uh, an example would be the Den of Evil. So for example, this is one of, I want to say probably like eight Den of Evil maps, roughly, something like that. That may not be exact, um, but there's essentially X number of Den of Evil maps that can spawn. So I, it kind of gives me a good idea. I know whenever I spawn on a any of the maps, I know which directions to kind of run in and whatnot. And so here's kind of the, uh, once again, annoyances of having these uh, shamans, is you kind of have to run around and catch all the guys. So I like to use Charge Bolt as my way for, I want to get that ruby later because I'm a little low on gold. I want to use Charge Bolt as a way for killing a majority of the stuff, and then I kind of use Fire Bolt um, for sniping stuff a little bit later. So that right there, that quest log gives me a how many monsters are left in this den. Uh, so that's good to know. One monster left, then I just want to get that chipped ruby, and then I'm going to head out of here. Okay, because I want a little bit of gold. Um, so here I'm just going to go ahead and shop and try and get some potions and kind of fill up on everything. Those weren't that great. Oh, no, that's not fun. So that burned a little bit of my money accidentally. It happens. But we should still have enough money at this point where I have enough uh, to go ahead and continue through. Um, I just want to have enough so I have stamina potions so I can continue running at all points and so I have enough for uh, some mana potions. So at this point, I want to get level four in the Cold Plains, uh, and I also want to find the exit. And one thing that's important to note is you can kind of tell where the exit is before you actually um, run through it. So there's two exits here. There's an exit to the Barrow Grounds and an exit to the Stony Field. Uh, so the exit to the Stony Field is going to be somewhere in one of the center exits of the map. You have to kind of imagine the maps as squares. Um, so this right here looks like it's going to be leading us not to the center of the map, right? That's leading up towards a corner. So I'm going to say that that's most likely going to be leading me um, to the Barrow Grounds, where I do not want to go. That's where you would go if you wanted to do the uh, Blood Raven quest. So instead, I'm going to be moving forward over here and looking for um, something that exits a little bit more towards the center. And I'll also kill this guy because he's a boss and he has a decent chance to drop some stuff. Um, so an important thing to note also about bosses is that they have um, way more experience. So this boss group, and there's the turn field. Uh, so this boss group right here of all these zombies, uh, each zombie is going to be a couple levels higher and they're going to give 500% experience compared to um, a regular monster. So it's such a huge experience gain that that's going to be my main focus throughout a lot of this run. And that's something that a lot of players don't really focus on, they kind of go around killing everything. Um, but there's certain, certain monsters that you want to kill, and then there's boss groups which you almost never want to skip. Uh, with the exception of sometimes the boss group has terrible, terrible um, extras, or what, what would you call it? Uh, some, something like they're cold enchanted, they're lightning enchanted, um, they're cursed attributes. Yes, that'll work. Oh, do not die. 
So Rakanishu is probably one of the first places in the game that you can actually die. Um, you can die before that, but he's one. Of, he's a very difficult one um, because he, you are solo level at this point, and you are lightning. Uh, right, I'm, I'm specced into lightning at this point, so I'm using Charge Bolt. And so Charge Bolt right here does lightning damage, and since he's lightning enchanted, he's not going to take a lot of lightning damage. Um, additionally, he also releases Charge Bolts whenever you hit him. So that's why I was using Fire Bolt on him right there, uh, because I want to um, I want to make sure that I uh, can kind of snipe him and do actual damage to him instead of hitting him with a ton of lightning that's not going to do a lot of damage and release a lot of Charge Bolts. Um, so I'm in the Underground Passage now, and this is one of those kind of really tricky areas with the maps. Uh, the, this gives you a general idea. I'll try and explain the map <laughs> as I'm kind of here. So I'm entering towards the um, northwest, right? Uh, so you can see that I've got right there, and there's my exit from that initial starting block. And this is going to be a dead end, it looks like. Um, so I'm entering from that north to, towards the northwest, which means the exit is going to be facing towards the southeast, the exit block. Um, so I want to try and make some sort of way this way. Um, and it looks like, so I was hoping that that would go right and then go up that way instead. Unfortunately, it didn't. Uh, so I'll go ahead and continue that way. And it looks like this will not as well. That's going to be a dead end. So where is this map going to go? This could be a fun map. Uh, so sometimes you just get really, really funky maps down here because it's one of those, it's not always going to be, it's kind of like in Diablo 1, if you were watching that run, um, where he was like, it's going to be on a north-facing wall a majority of the time. However, just because it's a majority of the time does not mean that that's going to always be the case. Um, so I, I want to just continue looking, and here, once again, I'm on my way towards that top uh, left towards that northwest corner and so that's going to be uh, my ideal path right there and we should hopefully find an exit up here I would imagine it's going to be up on this little roundabout so you really get used to kind of maps and things like that and there's our exit and uh, and that's just one example of a a really bad map if I was running for some sort of world record attempt or whatnot I would probably have reset um, after hitting that dead end and having to run all around there. Uh, it's one of those things where the world record has a lot of, it, it's been, we've been pushing it down a lot. Um, it's down to like 120 now. And in a game that has a lot of RNG and a lot of things like that, it makes it very difficult because you're not always going to be running a run that has world record potential. And I think that's something that's big. Um, I'll actually, do I have room for that? Let's do that. Uh, and, and that's kind of big and, and whatnot because a lot, of, a lot of people are like, you know, if you're watching something like Super Mario or, or something like that, um, where there's not really a lot of RNG, it, it makes it so, you know, any run you could, you could do it, right? Any run you could have um, that world record run. Yeah, but in this due, case, yeah. due to the nature of these runs, you can basically start a run and it's already dead before you know it. Yeah. So it's one of those where you will end up resetting a, a decent amount of time. Um, so right here, here's another boss group. And so this, is once again, is a great place where I can get some experience. And if you watch my experience bar when I just kill these guys, I mean, it just it, it jumps when I kill them because the experience is so high. Um, additionally, you'll note that I found the tower right there. That's going to be a very, 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 very uh, critical part of the run is searching that tower um, for specific runes is what they're called. So essentially, you can put runes into items, items that have sockets. That's really not a bad spawn at all. I will happily, happily take that. Um, and so, so you can socket items with these runes. And oh, we have no gold. That ring will be our saving grace. And we'll go ahead and get some stamina. And a couple more mana. That should be fine. So the, the, the runes, um, items will have open sockets. And I'll have to go search for those as well. And then you can put them in, and they have specific things they do. But additionally, they're going to have uh, specific um, like combinations. We'll do extra things. So it'll be like, OK, you have this rune. That looks like that'll actually be a, a good tower level right there in the future. Um, 
so, so, so you can put them together, and not only will you get the benefits of the runes, but they'll also give you additional things. And so one of the additional things that they'll give you is uh, something, well, in, in stealth, which is a rumor that I'm going to be making later, and I'll show you, is you get faster run walk, faster cast rate, and faster hit recovery. Um, so like you were watching uh, Funk in Diablo 1, he, he got rid of that with kind of a glitch in the game right there where he, no, where he could just get his health low enough and he would no longer be stunned. Diablo 2, I guess they fixed that. Uh, you can no longer do that. So you are always going to be stunned if you are being hit. Um, and so a way to kind of ease that is by having faster hit recovery so when they hit you, you, don't, you spend less time stunned, right? Um, so here, once again, I'm running around. I'm not just looking to get to the end of the tower. At the end of the tower, there is what's called the Countess, and she has a guaranteed drop on runes. Um, but I'm also looking for bosses because I want to spend this time uh, getting experience, right? So it looks like that level just had no boss, which is very unfortunate. Um, I really didn't get too much experience down here. At least the tower's kind of close. That'll be helpful. Um, but the tower spawns are generally one of the larger parts of a run. So if, if you go into the Black Mars, that's probably where you'll see a majority of runs get reset, is um, the tower. So what kind of tower do you have? Are you finding a lot of good boss groups in there or not? Uh, and then additionally, um, what kind of runes are you getting dropped? And what does your Black Marsh look like just in general? Uh, go ahead and sell that. And so here I'm going to start looking for some of those socketed things. There's some leather armor that's two open sockets. So I'll grab that, and that's all I've got, and I'll grab a belt as well. Uh, so that's just kind of something simple, so I can now have multiple things socketed, and I'll move on because I don't have enough gold um, to really do much with that. So here is a, uh, it's another boss group. So once again, I will always stop for a boss group, at least at this point in the game, uh, and all the time that I'm trying to level up. And that'll definitely be helpful, especially when my... Uh, my tower doesn't have a lot of boss groups in it, it looks like. So that right there is going to help me out a little bit. And I'm going to actually kind of check up here to see if another boss group spawned over there. It looks like they did not. Um, that's just one of the... Sometimes boss groups boss groups tend to spawn in, this, in similar areas. Uh, it's not always 100% or anything, but they do have a tendency to do so. So you kind of want to check specific areas um, multiple times. Um, and here it looks like we're not going to find another boss group. I'm going to be opening up those chests right there, or the, uh, whatever they're actually called, seals in the ground, um, because they're going to have uh, good chances to drop rings uh, and or amulets, and those have good chances to have faster cast rate on them. Um, and what that is, is the faster I can cast, the better off I am because later on in the game I'm going to be teleporting around trying to do things uh, and the way this game kind of works with that is you want to be able to um, hit the enemy before the enemy can hit you uh, and that's due to all of the stun lock right just like you can get locked up with stuns you can also lock your enemy up with stuns so I'm going to be going through and trying to get the jump on them and the faster that I can cast things uh, the better that'll be so it's been a decent tower so far, um, but I do have, there's, you know, we're going to be doing this for a little bit. I'll try and kind of explain boss groups as we go through uh, and little things I'm kind of hoping for and whatnot. Um, but if there are donations you want to read out, this would be an okay time. Awesome. We have a lot. Thank you, everyone, so much for your generosity. Just to give you all a quick heads up, uh, Saving the Barbarians has seen a surge of support. We are over halfway there now. so. If, if Sarah McLaughlin loved Barbarians, it'd be met by now. Just keep keep it coming. We can get them saved, I promise. Okay, we got $25 from Beulis. Love watching Mr. Llama, Ryu, and Teo speedrunning Diablo 2. Great community. Don't forget any runes. Yep. A $30 anonymous donation. Hey, Mr. Llama, don't you dare go pulling a llama. If you pull a llama during this run, I'm going to add another $20. Hope, to, hope you have some clever ideas to kill the Cow King, and hope you're happy with your Barb world record. Thanks for the great work, at all, and to all the people at the venue and the runners. Great cause. So here, what I want to find um, when I'm killing the Countess, there are six runes that I want to find. There are two that are crucial. 
So far, it has not been the greatest Countess drops. She can drop anywhere from zero to four runes. What can I do? Um, and the zero rune drops are very sad. One rune drops are a little bit sad still. Um, so I want to find Tal Eth, Tier Tier, Rao Rao. The important runes okay. to find are Tal Eth. Those are going to be uh, the runes that are going to enable me to buy stealth. And so with those, I'm going to be able to um, be able to get teleport and faster run walk and, and all those faster hair recovery, all those kind of crucial things. Uh, beyond that, uh, the Rao runes give me fire resistances. So you can see I have that one Rao rune right there already. Um, and that Ith rune I'm keeping because three Ith runes can convert into a Tau rune uh, a little bit later in the game, but before I need it. Um, before I need that Tau rune for that stealth armor. So it's one of those things that I'm just going to have to wait on a little bit. And we'll just have to see uh, what all we can find down here. Um, so I do have a backup save file in the event that something goes terribly wrong, and I just cannot for the life of me find it. Uh, but I'm really hoping that we don't have to use that. And most of the time, you do not. I would say most of the time, if, if I all I want is, is Taleth, and if I can find Taleth, I'll say that's good enough, and the rest of it I'll deal with. If I can't find Taleth, um, it would be a little painful uh, to go through this game without stealth. But it's something that I might still end up just considered doing anyways. Uh, it's one of those, you know, just a decision I, I'll, I'll have to kind of make at that time. But hopefully we don't have to use that. Additionally, the, uh, the tier runes are going to be used for mana per kill. So you see every time that I'm killing a monster right here, it's just, I'm, I'm, all I'm using is, is my mana to kill those monsters. This would give me mana back for every kill, and each tier rune is plus two. So essentially, it slows down the amount of, or it makes it where I can last out in the uh, in the field a little bit longer without having to go to town and restock on potions, um, which is always very helpful. And of course, if you want to cut time, that's a great way to do it: is spending less time in town, having to shop and farm and things. So I'm trying to once again look around and just find whatever bosses I can here, um, if I can get a little experience. Those right there are actually champions. They're only worth 300% experience, so they're not quite as lucrative. Um, and it's almost worth skipping them. But I want to get, because I don't have a ton of experience down this tower, I want to kind of get whatever I can from it. Uh, and then different monster groups, of course, are also going to give different experience. So for instance, that group that I just killed, it's very easy to kill, um, and I don't get as much experience for it. So I'd rather be finding uh, hell clans or things like that. Uh, to get my experience. I believe that's their name down here. And But this right here is a great example of a champion pack that I actually do enjoy. Um, so this is a champion pack of Devilkins. So with with each of these guys comes... Uh, there's a ring, might be faster cast rate. Definitely want to hold on to that. But which each of, with each of those guys um, comes uh, the added experience. And so you can actually get a lot of experience out of those packs. Um, so there, there are a couple of champion packs that are really worth it. So I'd really love a Tal F here. We're going to get a tier. She's just going one rune at a time for us. Slightly annoying, but what you need? We'll, see, uh, we'll see how it ends up acting. So something that a lot of people don't know is you can sell your tomes and it will automatically refill them. There's that mana per kill I was talking about. You usually get it with tier runes, but it can also spawn on rings. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab the ring with it. And I'm not... Okay, there is a two open socket right there. So I want to get a two open socket shield, two open socket helm, and then one more two open socket, one of either um, helm or shield. And this allows. This is where I'm going to put my tier and uh, row runes. And then additionally, if I can find some chip topaz along the way, I'll be using those in a shield for lightning resistances in... Um, Act 2, because Act 2 has uh, monsters known as beetles, which I'm sure if you've played Diablo 2, you know all about the Act 2 beetles, and they can do a lot of damage to you um, with their lightning enchant. So just like we saw the lightning enchanted uh, before from the uh, from Rakanishu there, that is on every single beetle, and so you can take so much damage, and it's so easy to just really quickly die um, if you're standing in the middle of a pack of them. At the same time, they're kind of a necessary evil, though, because they give a lot of experience. So it's one of those you don't really, really want to uh, have to deal with them, but you do want them at the same time. 
Love hate relationship. And if you have any more donations you'd like to read, you can go you ahead. You got it. We have a $600 donation. Woo! Jackson here, Mr. Llama. I just want to wish you good luck and hopefully first way arcane. Mr. Llama Army hype, Mr. Llama drama. <laughs> we have a $100 anonymous donation. Hey, Llama, I'm glad to see your lucky chain mail made it through airport security. May R and Jesus be on your side. First way is the best way. Avoid beetles and go fast. Hashtag Llama Army. Please put this donation to runner's choice. Uh, let's kill some animals. Is that what we can do with it? Is that allowed? Hmm. Can I kill some animals with it? Kill some animals, absolutely. Yeah. But not llamas. This day, so. Not llamas. We have a $20 donation from Dad's Bane. I love these speedrunning events. I've been waiting for this one since the European Speedsters Assembly. There couldn't be a better reason to donate for such a great cause as saving the barbarians. People like the barbs. They, they, uh, that's one of the big things in my chat. People love love having the barb saved for no reason and I usually don't do it during the run because it would take extra time that uh, you know if I'm trying for a world record run or something like that I won't be doing and speaking of world records and stuff uh, I'll go ahead and shout out um, the other D2 runners so the guy who has the the uh, world record for this is actually Teo1904 um, he is a great speedrunner and he's my main competition for majority of all of these um, runs like this there's the Ethrune, so now we're just one rune away oops, from having the two that we really want. Um, so he's my main competition, Nightfall X as well. Uh, he, is, he is actually what got me into Diablo 2 speedrunning. And then um, Raya Quetzalcoatl, and he actually uh, was supposed to be on the couch, but unfortunately he could not make it. So that was a little sad. So one thing that I'm not getting to do right now is search for... Uh, a faster cast rate wand and that would that is once again to go with what I would like from a ring or something like that um, that'll increase the speed that I can cast at of course uh, so if I could find that I would be happy but I have to generally it's one of those things that you're gonna go buy from Akara so kind of like Funk Master was shopping uh, for his stuff I would go and be shopping for that um, but unfortunately I've yet to find enough gold to really uh, do that so I may start collecting some items here um, that are worth a little bit of gold, just so I can do that. And I also got the uh, the stone right here, or the uh, whatever you call it, key to the Cairn stones. Um, and this is what's going to be used later on for when we save Cain, if Cain is going to be saved. I, I believe that donation incentive uh, is still undecided, and it'll go all the way through bail. Um, but that's going to be that decider right there. So this right here is a good boss group these blood plants, and this is something that I wish we had more of um, down here. Unfortunately, we have not had a ton of them. So I'm going to be putting points into strength. I want to have 25 strength uh, so I can wear that belt that I have, and I was hoping that ring would have been faster cast rate. Um, unfortunately, it's just plus mana, so we may not get that, and that'll be okay. If we don't, it'll, it'll just slow me down a tiny bit. Uh, and it'll just make it a little bit more difficult as the run goes on because once again I won't have that same sort of killing speed um, that I normally have but you know it, it's just one of the things you, you have to deal with a lot of things in a Diablo run um, a lot of just kind of random chance that happens uh, and so sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad uh, you just can't figure it out so champion archers right here I do not like that much I, it's probably not even worth really trying to kill her um, by the amount of damage she does, the amount of time it can take sometimes, uh, and the stun that she can kind of hit me with. So I, I try to generally avoid them unless there's like a pack of four, and then I'll look uh, to kill those guys. So we just need that Tal rune. I would also like another tier and another Ral, but once again, this is, you know, we will take what we can get. We just want to have the basics at this point. That's just how runs kind of work. And instead we get another Eth rune. So we are, we are seeing really low drop rates right now from her. Um, like I said, yes. generally you're going to find uh, a much higher chance uh, of drop for a lot of these things. So it's kind of unfortunate. And I'll do a little inventory management. It's a little dirty uh, right now. 
just to give everyone a heads up. Just in case. The donation incentives for all the bonus games have been met, so they are now open. All right. So here I'm going to be looking for a faster cast rate wand. I'm not going to find it. So I'm just going to go ahead and move on. Uh, and I'll just, every time that I'm in town, I'm going to go shopping at both of those until I find, oh, that is a minion. So that's actually a uh, boss group right there. And I'll go ahead and run back to kill the boss group because I do need a little bit of experience. One thing to note about potions in this game uh, majority of the potions in this game are actually over time compared to D1 where it's instant. Mm -hmm. So he actually has to preemptively guess if he's going to die and pop a potion then. Right, so it's a little bit different because like you were saying, uh, in D1 it was like he's starting getting hit, he's getting hit, he can just instantly cast a mana potion, refill it instantly, uh, and then you know he can, he can have a little bit more time and whatnot. And with not being stunned it makes it very useful. Um, instead, in Diablo 2, you are taking those guesses. I was really hoping that would have faster cast rate on it. But it has nice damage taken and goes to mana, I guess. So that's something I'll use for now. And uh, we can see until I get that faster uh, casting wand. Not great as a melee weapon, though. So these are, again, the champions. And they just really aren't worth a ton. Um, they drop potions, which is really nice if you need potions at the time. Uh, I don't, unfortunately, really need potions right now. I just want um, rings, and I just want experience, uh, and then that tower rune. And then that's all we kind of want, and then we'll be leaving here. Um, archer groups are definitely one of the more scary groups, so you'll note that I do kind of a, a kiting measure around. I haven't had too bad of archer groups. The only really terrible one that I had was a cold enchanted archer group a little bit earlier. Um, but they can, there are things like they can be cursed, um, which means that they will uh, put amplified damage on you, which gives you 100% more damage received. Additionally, they can, that might be a boss group there, yeah it is. Um, additionally, they can have cold enchant, they can be lightning enchanted, uh, or they can be extra, what's called extra strong. And if they're extra strong, that's generally um, also really scary, because they just do so much damage in this game. And being, uh, when you're really under leveled, you come in here at like level six, um, you're just going to get absolutely slaughtered by them. So now I have 25 strength, I can put on uh, my big boy belt. That's going to give me uh, the ability to hold 12 potions now instead of eight, which is very useful. Um, especially as you get a little bit later on in the game and, and whatnot, you want to have the ability to teleport around, which uses a lot of mana. Uh, and so you're going to want to not be stopping every second to refill your belt if possible. And a tower room would be absolutely lovely. And there's a tower room. Sweet. So at this point, I'm going to go a little bit longer down there. And you might be wondering, but you have your tower room, why would you do that? Um, it's because the experience down here actually is uh, pretty decent. I'm not going to find that extra. Um, so it's actually a uh, pretty decent experience down there. That's probably some of the better experience that I'm going to find in the game. Um, and so what I, what I might do, actually, is I might run ahead. This was a strategy that Tail used. Um, no faster cast rate again. So I'm going to actually uh, possibly just run ahead here. And I can set a TP. I have one left, so i got to be careful. I'll go ahead and set a TP. And then I'm going to go ahead and start moving towards the next area. Um, and then I can, if I find an experience shrine, I can snag that and just head back um, once I get to that next sort of boss group. Uh, or the next waypoint, right? Because those waypoints are going to let me uh, bounce back. So shrine right there, I want to look for it. And <laughs> it's an experience shrine, so I'll go ahead and just turn right back um, because we are close enough at this point. So experience shrines are the best part, one of the best parts of this game, uh, and the best parts for a really good run. So like I said, while this map is decent, you'll note that there are zero shrines on the way. There's that shrine, but it's a health shrine, so it's always going to be a health shrine. Um, other shrines like, like this experience shrine can constantly change, but it is one of the best things that I could find, and there's one ship topaz, which is decent to have. Um, but this experience shrine is really nice to have because it's going to allow me to get 150% uh, experience 
while I have it. So this is going to give me essentially super leveling for a little bit of time. Um, and so some people I know, um, in Diablo we have what are called segmented runs as well. Uh, it's not a hugely run category, but it is somewhat run, and it's where you can constantly um, save the game and basically reload until you find everything that you want. Uh, so an example would be um, if, I, if that shrine wasn't an experience shrine, I would just save the game, quit, and keep going until it was an experience shrine, and then I would continue moving on from that point. Uh, so it's very good, and it allows you to kind of speed up the game, but it's something that you'll take a long time to actually build out a full segmented run, because you're going to be doing, you know, let's say I want faster run walk boots, I, you know, specific kind of boot to drop from Indariel, which is the, the Act 1 boss. I'm going to continue killing her over and over and over and over again. Uh, and I think in the segmented run that Teo did, he probably killed Indario like 500 to 1,000 times. Something like that. So I just when I, when I quickly hover over that boss right there, that's just to check what the modifier is. So here it's stone skin, so I'm not too worried about it. That just means they have increased defense. Um, if it was cursed, though, that would be a worry. Because like I said, the amplified damage um, curse gets put over my head, but to but what it does is it actually replaces the shrine over my head. So I'd actually lose my experience shrine, which of course would make me a little bit sad. Uh, another thing that I want to mention um, was in regards to one of the donations. I think it was from Jackson. Uh, tr I'm trying to remember what exactly it was he said, but he mentioned something that was decently important. Um, so maybe I'll remember it as it goes on. And there's, there's an example of a cursed boss, right? So that right there is a boss that I would not want to stand next to while I had a shrine. And we've gotten a couple rings here. So this gives me hope that maybe we will find uh, a faster casting ring right there. It's a possibility. I think he referenced something about pulling a llama. All right, pulling a llama. Sure, we'll go with that one. Um, all right, so another Ithtal doesn't really do us much at this point, but it's just good to sell. Uh, so one one thing that used good to, to happen you. sometimes, doesn't often happen, though they'll tell you otherwise, um, is that I would run out of teleports. As you can see, I currently have run out of teleports. Um, but I would run out of teleports on the, like, at the very end of the game. Um, and so I'd be sitting in, like, Bale's throne room about to finish the game, and then I would just need to like go get more potions or something like that and I would have no more. Uh, so it was a very sad affair and that usually uh, that, that kills the run. So we're just looking for 10 faster cast rate. It can also spawn on scepters um, but we just are not finding it at all. So I'll go ahead and start moving on at this point. I think that's uh, long enough in the Countess. Usually I run to anywhere between level 12 and 13. Um, in this case, I ran it until 12 and uh, a fifth or so, um, which is which is something that we can just kind of live with and make do. And that is a cold enchant, and usually I want to dodge that Frost Nova. Unfortunately, I uh, did not quite dodge it. So I'll go ahead until I get to that next area, um, and then once I get that next section, I'll probably go back to town. I'll put the uh, this little scroll away because it's just kind of taking up room. And there's another boss group, so I want to just kill them along the way. And that's a decent boss group to have. Heavy boots are also a decent item to pick up. I can't grab it. Nope. There we go. And they've got some faster hit recovery on them. And that's about all. So unfortunately, they did not have something like big, big lightning resist or something like that. Sometimes you can find um, amazing, amazing things on just some rare items that can super boost your game. So it's just like massive resistances, oh, faster run walk, uh, things like that. Um, and I wouldn't say massive boost your game, but it's just like super helpful to have. And here's another boss. And you can tell it's a boss whenever the colors are a little different. The boss is usually going to be a slightly different color. Sometimes you have those green, blue. Other times I, they're just going to have one main guy with some gray. So this is an example of another map that's going to be um, perfectly, like there's three maps to choose from, so I don't really have to uh, look around too much and whatnot at that point, um, because I just I know exactly which way there's w which way I need to go out of there. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and stock up on some stamina. This is going to be 30 seconds per potion. A lot of people don't know that these stack, 
Um, these stack, antidote potions stack, and thawing potions will stack. So by drinking all of these potions, I now probably have like 10 minutes or so of time that I'm going to have uh, with unlimited stamina. It just makes it so I don't have to worry about constantly popping a mana potion or running, or, or stamina potion, or running out of stamina um, as the run kind of moves on. And something you'll see me do uh, often is I'll run past a boss group and I'll just hover over it really quickly. Um, that's going to be uh, something that, that I need to just... Oops, let me be a careful. Um, that's me checking to see if they have that minion title, because if they have a minion title, that means that there is a boss group, which of course, like I said before, is something that I want. And that is a very nice barracks to lead me to the jail level one, um, which is very nice. It's long gone now. So one other thing to kind of note about this run is that it doesn't really have um, a lot of glitches or anything like that. There will be a couple little parts that I'll probably discuss um, somewhere along the way. There's a second ship, Topaz, which is really nice. Um, but it, it's not one of those games where it's like, all right, I can glitch through this wall and, and do all this stuff. The, the game actually is pretty well built. Um, and so you're just going to be pretty much running through it. Um, it's basically completing the game as fast as possible, as opposed to more of a completing the game as fast as possible by you know bypassing a lot of pieces, things like that. Um, so it, it's kind of interesting in that nature. And that was actually one of the things uh, that drew me to the game was when I watched the other games. Um, I, I just you know I, I enjoy watching them a ton, but I always thought I don't know. I, I kind of like playing through a whole game here. Um, and so that's something that I can do with Diablo 2 and what I really enjoy. Uh, something else to kind of note, these maps are similar to the Underground Passage in the sense of there's a certain direction. So once again, I entered coming in into the uh, northwest corner. So now that means my exit is going to be facing the southeast corner. So I'm going to constantly be looking for some sort of exit block. When I say exit, I don't mean the exact staircase but the block that contains the staircase um, is going to be facing towards that way. So it doesn't give you an exact idea, but like this allows me to find like this area right here much easier um, than just random exploration of the map. And so a lot of maps have that. I would actually say a majority of maps are going to have that, um, and that's going to be pretty useful for me to kind of avoid having to explore too much of too many maps, uh, though of course there are some maps that I just can't avoid doing that on, such as the catacombs, um, which we'll be seeing shortly, um, as soon as I kind of get down here through this area. So I do kind of kill uh, random monsters along the way. Um, yeah, so, th so this map right here is going to be a little tricky. I'll go ahead and go up here and see if this will lead me uh, over to the right anymore. Looks like it will not. Okay, so that's just going to be a dead end right there. So sometimes sometimes maps um, are just a little funky. So this one, because it's entering towards that bottom left corner, the exit's actually going to be towards the bottom right corner some way. But once again, it could be up there and over. It could be down here and over. Um, it could be up, up, and then like up there in some weird sort of crazy direction and whatnot. Uh, so you really just don't know. But I mean, now we know we can see it down below us. So now that I have my level 13, I'm going to be putting my tier rune in my helmet. And that's going to give me that mana per kill. And I'm also going to be going ahead and uh, kill all these things and maybe pick up a couple potions. Um, I, what I really like to do is... Uh, I don't have a scroll of town portal. I might want to do that on level 2. Go get another one of those if you guys want to remind me. Funk. Sure. No problem. Okay. So, actually, I can just see that right here. We'll just make it easy. <laughs> don't even don't even bother messing around with it. We can also look for that faster cast rate wand again. My only job. There is one. Yeah, perfect. So that'll cost us a little bit of gold, um, but really not too bad overall. And we'll go ahead and fill that up, just so we don't have to worry about it later on. Though we still might end up worrying about it later on. Because you do burn through teleports uh, a little bit, TP scrolls as the game goes on, and of course I'm going to try and be um, a little bit marathon safe here because if I were to die, like normally I wouldn't even get that waypoint right there, I would just kind of run right past it um, because, you know, don't every second kind of counts right in a world record run. Um, and that's a great catacombs level one. So this right here is completely random maps. The only thing that I know 
is on level two, I know whichever way I can, if I find the waypoint first, I have an idea of which way I need to run beyond that. That is the only uh, piece of information I know. Other than that, um, it's just going to be kind of running around like a madman, looking for the exit. And if we find it, awesome. If we do not, um, well, I mean, it has to be there, right? So we have to find it, I guess, eventually. And so that's going to be dead ends there. Um, so now I know that I want to run in a uh, clockwise direction because I know that if I find the waypoint, the exit is going to be... Okay, we're actually going to find the waypoint. That was not supposed to happen like that, but it happens. Um, the exit's going to be facing now towards the bottom, uh, towards the bottom left way. Um, so a lot of times if you run a clockwise direction, you, it's almost you always want to run right of the waypoint, we kind of say. Um, and so I'm going to be looking in a couple of areas over here and kind of seeing if it bends back around. Doesn't look like it does. So this map is going to be a little tricky. And so this is, a, this is an example of just kind of the game messing with you. Right, you have a general idea of how it should go, uh, but doesn't always. So I'm guessing it might be right above. And so it's going to be um, heading over here to this section and then assuming it's going to take a sharp or a downturn towards the bottom left at some point. And if that happens, then I'm guessing that's most likely where we'll find it. We'll see. And here it is. And I'm guessing this is the exit. It pretty much has to be. So there's going to be our exit. Um, so that's something that's, that's kind of a just kind of map sense that you develop as you speed run this game. Um, and it, it's very useful. Um, it's, it's definitely useful because without that, you're going to be spending a lot of time running around. Please do not die. Oh, he's lighting enchanted. Okay. So that's an example of a terrible boss that I do not want to have to fight. Um, that is lightning enchanted. And what's also kind of horrible about lightning enchanted is you can't always see the, uh, the bolts that he's firing off. I can't carry anymore. This is what he'll have to be dealing with in basically Act 2. Right. That's very painful. That is the entirety of Act 2, essentially. Let's do that. Um, so, yeah. So, so it, it can get very painful. Um, and But, yeah. So, the charge bolts will not always show up. So, it's one of those. Sometimes you're sitting there. You're fighting something. You didn't quite check what it was. And then you just notice yourself starting to get stun locked. And then you die. And you're like, wait, what just happened? Oh, okay. He was lightning enchanted, and I didn't, you know, I didn't see any of the bolts flying at me, and that that was it. Um, so you have to be a little bit careful with that. That, of course, can happen with beetles. That can happen with basically any anything that releases charge bolts. So once again, there's absolutely no knowledge right here of how these maps run. Um, these maps are just randomly built with tiles. I have a general sense, like I know when I hit that little piece, that that was not going to be a way I needed to go. Um, so I have a general idea of kind of some dead ends and what some map ends are going to look like. But overall, um, there's just you, just you just can't know. You just have to kind of run around until you uh, get lucky. So this is also another place where you can really save a lot of time um, in your run, right? Because if you find this, if you find this just immediately, then you can save. You know, you find all three of these pretty quickly, and you have good experience coming out of the Black Marsh. You can be really far ahead um, than if you had not at all, and if or if you come out of this, and then you have to spend all this time running around every single map. So we had a decent level one. Our level two um, was okay at best, and our level three here is pretty atrocious. As you can see, we're going uh, to go ahead and give a tour of the entire map. It looks like at this point. Ironically, it's also named the Catacombs. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And so there's our exit. So here's going to be the boss. Um, this is going to be Andario. And recently, we, we actually changed our strategy for how we kind of carried through. Before, we used to actually respec um, a little bit earlier, so we would have Nova and whatnot. And I'll have to shut that door so they can't come through. Um, but lately, we've just been going mass charge bolt into this area, and it's actually been working out pretty well. Um, and I, I would say one of the reasons is because charge bolt is a lot better with dealing with some of the catacombs monsters. And so by having that, um, it makes it a little easier for us. And that's a boss group right there. So of course, I want to kill boss groups. 
So this is our boss. Um, she has insane poison damage, so if, or I should say when she hits me, I'm going to be taking a lot of poison. Uh, and if I die, it's really not a terrible thing because I have that um, TP right there. But of course, I'm going to hope to not die. Um, it's never something that you want to do, but I have that TP and you just respawn pretty closely. So it is something that, uh, that, uh, that happens, you know. And I would say every world record run uh, just about is going to have um, some sort of death in it at some point. And usually it's just not as an important not as important of a death I where it, it just doesn't matter that much. Let me put that there, we'll grab the skull cap. So that's gonna be queen. act one. And now we're gonna go ahead and respec as we move towards act two. And really quickly I'm just gonna check at Charcy uh, to see if she has um, any of those any more shields. Or a shield, because she hasn't given me any yet. So two open socket shield is pretty important here uh, because it'll allow me to uh, put those topaz in there. So here I'm going to go ahead and just set all of my hotkeys. Talk to Decker Kane, identify all the items. Check here for fast runwalk boots or some sort of awesome belt. Looks like we found a pretty nice belt that has faster hit recovery on it. So I'm going to go ahead and want to keep that, and that is actually not bad at all, but it has no faster cast rate. So we'll just sell all of these things, um, and we do not need that either. There we go. So we're going to start filling up on potions, and then just kind of moving through. Our gold's actually pretty good at this point. I'll probably go ahead and put the gold away, um, just to kind of save it, and then I can also have a little more room. So I'll actually do that now, because I want to put that in there. Save a little bit of the gold, uh, and then we can start massing up a few more potions. So once again, we don't have to come back as often um, to town. And you'll note that I have one extra skill point right here, uh, and the reasoning for that is that I'm going to want to use that uh, for teleport when I hit level 18. So at level 18, I'm going to want to put a point into Nova. I'm also going to want to put a point into teleport. Um, so boss spawns out here are kind of random. Um, I've been lucky lately where I, I keep drawing beetles out here. And once again, like I said, this is the experience that these give are absolutely insane. Uh, but you can also see the damage that I'm taking is also really painful. Um, so it's kind of a, uh, you know, I wish I had that shield right now. And I may actually go back um, when I'm in the uh, dry hills if I find that waypoint something like that, and just quickly look to see if I can find that two open socket shield again. Because having that would give me 24 light resist, whereas right now I have none. Though I guess I do have a shield on my alternate that I picked up just in case. So now I have seven, which you might as well have none at that point. It's really going to be very, uh, very minor. Even 24 feels like nothing when you're dealing with beetles. Their charge bolt da damage is so high. Um, that is just, it just absolutely destroys you. So Act 1 and Act 2, I'm going to be running through, as you're kind of seeing right now. Um, as I move into Act 3 and Act 4 and Act 5, I'm just going to be teleporting. So that's where the run's going to really speed up. A majority of your run is spent in Act 1 and Act 2. So I'm not exactly sure what my time was coming through earlier. That's fine. Um, but generally Act 1 will be like, you know, somewhere between 35 and 45 minutes. Uh, your Act 2 will take about 20 to 30 minutes. Your Act 3 will take about 10 to 15 minutes. Your Act 4 will take about another lightning enchant. Your Act 4 will take about, um, and there you can see, like, I'm just getting hit by random charge bolts sometimes that don't even exist. Your Act 4 will take about um, 5 to, or 4.30 to, like, 6 minutes, and your Act 5 will take about 7 or 8 minutes. Uh, so it really does kind of speed up as everything goes on. And right now I just want to get away from that guy. Because having him follow me um, is just going to be terribly annoying every single time that I cast. Oh, there he is again. Let's see if we can freeze him and get out. I don't know if it's going to be possible. He's, he is uh, hes just sticking right on us. 
That's fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and now be looking for uh, the different pieces in Act 2. So the way Act 2 works is you have to, and I'm sure those of you who have played this game are like, oh, Act 2, I hate Act 2 so much. Um, yeah, it can be a little annoying. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to find all these different pieces. You have to find a cube, which you can then use to morph um, the staff in. You have to find a, a smaller staff and then an amulet. I actually missed the exit down there. That's a little sad. Um, and then you have to find the exit, or the uh, amulet. You morph the amulet and the staff together, and then you can put the bigger staff into the um, whatever, into the, what, what's it called? The Roger it. Cube? Or, oh, uh, the... Yeah, the final thing. Oh, it starts with a T. <laughs> what is it? I can't hear yeah. it through the headset. That's fine. We'll see it when we get there. Essentially, you place it into a spot, and cool things happen. And it blows up and opens the, the waypoint tutorial. This guy is the biggest pain ever. Is it the tribute? <sighs> it sounds close. Regardless. OK, so here is our, um, here is our, whatever you call that as well. Names are, uh, forgive me right now. But essentially, that's where I'm going to find the Hatchet Cube. Um, Halls of the Dead. And because the waypoint is over in that top left and it's a little bit further away, I'm going to go ahead and try. Fetch gas rate? Darn it. I'm going to go ahead and just go to this exit here. Uh, I know the exit's down this bottom corner because it's not in the other corners. So once again, it's kind of randomly generated, but not really. Your exit's always going to be in a corner. Here you can see I entered in that top left corner, I exit in the bottom right corner. So if I can find the far oasis um, waypoint first, I'll go ahead and just use that, go back through my teleport, and that'll save me a little bit of time for key. running. If I find the maggot lair first, which is where I'm going to find the other piece, um, I'll go ahead and just drop a uh, TP at that at that piece um, because I'll, I'll, I have that Dry Hills waypoint. So it's essentially, if I did not have that Dry Hills waypoint, then I would want to really make sure I found this far oasis waypoint. So it can be one of the, this could also be like a run killer. These, these sorts of maps right here. And when I say run killer, I mean like world record run killer, not like just, you know, standard run killer for us right here. Um, because if I can't find, you know, let's say I find the, the Halls of the Dead there, I drop a TP, and then I can't find this far away this waypoint. And I find the Maggot Lair, and then I find the exit to the Lost City, and then I find what I need in the Lost City, and it's like, okay, now I've just found absolutely nothing. Um, and all I, all I have is, you know, I have no waypoints to go anywhere. Or if they're really far apart or whatever it is. So there's different things that can kind of happen. And you'll see me kind of go back for certain items like smoke spears that are blue and things like that. That's because they are skill specific. Um, so like this is a sorceress item. And it, it'll have plus skills on it, usually some, some sort of plus skill. Uh, and when it has that, it has very good gold. So I, I want to have that gold um, for later on because the sorceress actually uses a ton of gold compared to a lot of characters. And so here's here's the beetle boss, and he's worth a decent amount of experience. And all those items right there actually have a chance at being worth some money. So I'm level 15 in the Far Oasis. It's it's not a terrible level. I would like to be slightly higher leveled. Unfortunately, my Far Oasis did not spawn with beetles. This is one of the places where you can have those beetles. Um, and you can get a lot of experience just kind of running around here. And so there's our Far Oasis waypoint. So that's perfect. We can go back to town now. Um, I'm actually going to shop really quickly at Charcy. Wait. I have to do this. So I have to reset Charcy. And the way you reset um, any of the vendors in town is by leaving the town, but it's by leaving the town in that act. Okay, so she is. Was that one open socket? I might just take that. Yeah. Sure. We'll go ahead and just go with that. So that's going to give us 12 instead of 7. It's a little bit better. It's not ideal. Um, but, you know, we kind of take what we can get at this point. Because you can't. I mean, you, you could okay. spend, you know three, four minutes just trying to shop for a two open socket shield, and that's just not going to be worth it. So down the dry hills, I'm going to be one, I'm going to want to run um, towards the left on every single map. Unless I see something down at the bottom, kind of below, 
and that's going to be that it's possible this could turn around, right? So three rights make a left. So when I was talking about going left, well, I may have to go right, 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 and then it's that way. Um, but generally speaking, you're going to find your exit, and here's our exit, uh, in the specific direction. I would say like 80 to 90% of the time, it's going to be towards that direction without having to make you do that like big wrap around. So we'll run left as often as we can here until um, until we get to every exit. And then at the bottom of level three, we'll get that cube. And that cube will be very good uh, for just kind of morphing everything together. And then I can also put runes and different things like that in there if I need. So like I, like I had said before, if I had um, those Tau runes, uh, or like if I had three Ith runes and I still need a Tau rune, I could put those Ith runes right now in the cube that I get here. Um, and go ahead and make a tower rune for myself without needing, um, with, with, before I even need to use stealth. So it just makes it kind of simpler, um, as opposed to, you know, if, if, if I needed stealth a lot earlier, then it would be a little bit more difficult, because then I would have to, uh, that, 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 that strategy just probably wouldn't work as well, because then you would go ahead and do that, and then it'd be like, all right, well, now I'm gonna get my stealth later on in the game, and having your stealth as soon as possible is pretty key, especially when you start teleporting. It's just way too key at that point. Uh, so there's some boots. I want to get those boots, and I'm also going to need to make room uh, for this cube as well. So that is piece one of three from Act 2. Um, and Act 3, you actually have to find even more pieces, but a lot of people don't really know that that well. That's poison resistance is not that great. There's some lightning res, so that'll help a little bit. We'll go ahead and sell these, and that should be good. So let's restock on potions really quick. And these are what I'm doing right there to restock my, my potions very quickly, is you can shift, uh, shift by your potions, and then as soon as you shift by them, you can unequip your belt. And so it takes your belt off, and of course, without a belt, you can't carry potions beyond one socket. So it puts all of those, that's a nice maggot layer. Um, so it puts all of those potions into your inventory, uh, and then that just continues over and over um, until you fill it up. So that's a really quick way to kind of do that instead of buying constantly. Um, something that you guys may note though is that I do use uh, the um, double click buy. I use left click for buying instead of right click, and that's because it's actually faster in, in single player. So that's kind of a big issue with running this game in multiplayer, is that this game um, runs very, very... There's a lot of lag and there's, there's a lot of issues like that if you're going to be playing multiplayer with it. And so um, if you do that, the lag to like buy a potion is just forever. And so you want, when you want to fill like an entire stash or an entire inventory with potions, you're just doing that for so long uh, and it really just takes... It just, take, it just takes way too long. Um, so once again, I want to run right in the maggot layer, and so when I say right, it's right of the way I came in. So in this case, I came in facing towards that top left corner, so I want to run towards that top right corner. And that's going to be the way that the exit has to be facing. And that's going to be for level 1 and 2, and then level 3 is going to ha always be facing. Uh, the exit will always be, or the end point, I guess I should say, will always be um, in the same facing the same direction. So that one we don't have to worry about which way we come in or anything like that. I've actually found a lot of uh, rings right now, which is very good because that means we have a chance at having found a faster cast rate ring. Which right now would be kind of useful, but it's usually when we're teleporting around and stuff that's going to be extremely useful. That's going to be the really important time. And so this is a boss group. And of course I want to kill the boss and kill the group because I get good experience out of that. So that pushes me to near level 16, um, which is decent right now. And if I can finish this area around 16 and like a third or something like that, I would probably be pretty happy um, because I want, to, I want to get to a point where I'm going to be close to level 18 or at level 18 finishing act two. If I can do that, then I'll be happy. Um, that's going to be kind of my ideal spot. And it looks like this map is not going to ever turn right, so I'm guessing we had to go down and then over to the right. Uh, and that's just one of those, you just got to pick a way. Um, so this is, once again, another bit that kind of makes it a little difficult sometimes. 
when you're sitting there saying, okay, I'm trying to run a record run. And it's like, okay, great. Um, you may have to reset 100, 200 times because you may just not get the maps. You may just pick the wrong direction, right? The map might even not be bad. If it's right down there, it could just be right there. But if you pick the wrong direction at first, well, you're just going to be in trouble. Um, so that's just, that's just kind of how it works, how it goes. So this is the final level of the maggot lair right here. And I am just going to, it looks like I'll get my level 16. Won't get much more beyond that, unfortunately. But that's okay. And looks like the boss. So I don't really want to kill this guy. Um, he doesn't give too much experience, and he'll actually slow me. Um, he'll freeze me when he, when he dies. He's cold enchanted. So it's kind of annoying to do that. Uh, nothing, nothing. All those rings were bust. Very unfortunate, very unfortunate. Okay. So I like, I like to really quickly kind of check all the items there, as you kind of see me doing. I want to get a couple more of those, and then a couple stamina. Um, so by checking all of those rings, uh, or by, by checking all of those items in the shop, it gives me a chance to have um, some sort of plus resistances, right? Such as I found that shield in there with plus 7 light res. Um, sometimes you can find boots that are like plus 20 light res, or plus fire resistances, whatever it is. Uh, so things like that are always nice to have, and that's a lot, of, lot more of what you work with through this. Um, and so... Some, something that like some of you guys may notice. I actually have to go back the other way really quick to check that section. Uh, but something you might notice is like I'm not even wearing gloves or an amulet, right? I just haven't found gloves or an amulet worth anything, and so it's something that you just you just don't waste your time on. It's it's not important enough. Um, you you kind of just have to play without it. You just figure it out as you go. Uh, so so it's just one of those things that you just I say, all right, well. I'm just not going to have gloves unless I find awesome gloves, and then I'll wear my awesome gloves. And that's about it. Um, so it, it, it's always, that's always kind of the fun thing, I guess, uh, with, with this game, I think, is every run, your items are completely different. Sometimes you're super stacked. You're like near max resistances and everything. You fe you're wearing all these awesome items, all these plus fast cast rate, all these other things. And other runs, you're wearing nothing. You're wearing just like your stealth armor, and your wand, and everything else that you have found has been complete garbage. So here I'm just trying to kill some random things. Um, I try and make all of my, my shots do as much damage as they possibly can. Uh, simply, or uh, to as many monsters as they can. Uh, and I, f I feel like that's kind of basic, right? I want to hit as much stuff um, without wasting a bunch of time, like spending time killing one monster group or anything like that. And now I want to find the stairs, and I'm just praying that the stairs weren't up there behind that little nook. No, they're over here. Okay. So I'm looking for the stairs, and I'm just looking for this exit so I can find the Claw Viper Temple. It's either going, it's going to be in one of the corners, as is a lot of this stuff uh, throughout this run. And so I'm going to be looking over in this corner. And there's a way that I can kind of tell with these maps if it's going to be over there or not. So it looks like it will not be over here. Um, because it has this indentation, essentially, right? So you can see this little indentation up up there that has that little bit. Um, that right there tells me that it's not going to be in that corner. So if I had run to that indentation first and seen that, I would have said, all right, I know it's not there. I'm not even going to bother checking the rest of that corner. Um, so there's little cues like that that you can find in this game that kind of help you out along the way. I've actually had kind of bad Act 2 maps so far. Uh, if you've noticed, I've been fourth weighing every single m map, which means I've run to every single corner of the map over and over again. Um, so that's a little unfortunate. Like I said, usually in your record runs, you're going to be going through there in like first and second way all those areas and finding team. everything along the way. So here we're just going to find that final piece. Once we find that final piece, we'll morph them together. Uh, and then we can begin some of the favorite parts of the, uh, probably of my stream, or one of the favorite parts. Um, this is where we do gambling, because the way that it works is it's random. It is This is one of the maps that's completely random. It's the Arcane Sanctuary. There is no pattern. I have looked 
I've had other people look. I'm pretty sure everybody that has run this game has looked. Just praying that there was some way we could figure it out. Uh, none of us have figured that out yet, if there is such a way. Ooh, that's nice. And so we, we just have no clue. So that's actually extremely nice that I found that, and it's really nice I found that right before that boss group, because that's going to be um, extra experience for me. So I'll actually go ahead and show off one of the glitches in this game. I can put Tal and Eth, and there's my stealth armor. And I, I don't know if it actually worked for us that time. Uh, but essentially what it does is it allows me, I guess so, it allows me to use stealth um, before it actually activates, right? So I'm too low of a level to use this right now. You'll see that it's red, required level 17. But I'm getting the faster run walk. I will get the fast run walk and uh, whatnot abilities from it before it even um, activates for anywhere from zero to 86 seconds. Some like completely random counter number um, that goes off. Oh wow, I just realized up in that corner there's a little exit. I thought it was a no exit. That's a little, that's a little rough. So I was like, I, I thought it was gonna be a triple wraparound map where it was, you know, go that way, that way, that way. Um, but there's just the eggs up here. So that was just me missing it. That happens. But it ended up not being the worst thing ever because I did get good experience and I did find this experience shrine as well. So I do kind of like that bit at least. But yeah, so the Arcane Sanctuary, which we're coming up on, uh, is, is one of the rougher parts uh, of a run. And I have seen so many of my runs and other players' runs die in that area just due to the fact that, oh, I didn't actually, I, f I found, it took the fourth way or whatever to find it. Um, and that's kind of what I'm known for, unfortunately, is being the guy who fourth ways it. Not, not a good thing to be known for. In before first, that would be amazing. I would love that. So we hit our level up, so now I'm gonna go ahead and have that level up actually. And I'm gonna scoot on up here. And we'll just go home really quick. And get a little more uh, health right there. So we'll identify our items. Our experience trying to about run out. It lasts for 144 seconds. Uh, I actually want Who to take that out and sell it. Beings could cause so much trouble. Sell that. Keep those. And we'll restock on potions here. Once again, just very quick way to uh, get all my potions. And then we'll put our gold away as well. So what I have to do here is I need to go morph these together and talk to Drognan. And that'll allow me to now enter the Arcane Sanctuary, um, which I said is hopefully first way, but you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So place your bets now. Go ahead, Twitch chat, place your bets. Is there the potential for a fifth way? There is the potential for a fifth way. I've, I've also been known to run the fifth way. Uh, so the fifth way is essentially you start down a certain path and then there's some sort of like lightning enchanted monster blocking you or some sort of whatever getting in your way um, and you just say, forget this, I'm gonna go back and go another way because this way is terrible. And then of course that ends up being the way that you need to run. Uh, and so we call that the fifth way. House wins on the fifth way because I, I lose pretty badly on the fifth way, so. It's a way to make me feel a little better. So we'll go ahead and go to palace level three. Um, there's always gonna be a boss group down here. I'm gonna look, there they are. Okay, so I don't even have to go look for them. Sometimes they're a little bit on the other side or whatnot. And what's nice about this boss group is they'll actually freeze up when they hit a, a low enough health um, with your static. So I guess I should kind of explain the spells that I'm using uh, and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and start on this top right way, and it is a teleport way. And that has teleport pads, and I can telekinesis these. So this is the fastest way, because it allows me to just kind of move around really quickly with telekinesis. What telekinesis does is I just have to... Um, it only works on various things, so I, can't, I can pick up like a potion with it, like that. Um, I can use it on those teleport pads. I can use it on a teleport scroll, or a teleport, I should say. Um, town portal. Uh, sorry, not teleport scroll. Um, but only when I'm in town, when I'm out of town, I cannot use it on one. 
Um, so it has very specific rules for when it can and cannot be used, and that's just something you kind of learn along the way. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm using uh, this right here, which is called Nova. So Nova just does decent damage in a big AoE. Um, and so by using Nova, uh, it's very easy for me to just do the damage that I need to do. First way, first way, no. So that right there is not going to be first way, so I'll just go back and run the next way. And like I said, there is absolutely no pattern to this, so it's really random, and you can see why it could be a run killer. Because if you can find it first way one time, and the other person finds it fourth way, well, the fourth way person's kind of in trouble. And the experience in here is okay, but it's not good enough to kind of offset that. That was also the fastest way, and that it had those um, teleport pads. None of the other ways are going to have that. So every other way is going to be a little bit slower, and we'll just kind of have to see um, how it gets there and whatnot, or how long it takes us to find it, how many ways we have to go. Uh, but, but yeah, so that's the um, second skill I'm using is Nova. Third skill I use is this Frozen Armor. That gives me an armor when a monster hits me. Uh, I guess a melee monster. He freezes just temporarily. So that's actually really useful to have in like Act 3 or when, when you're teleporting around and stuff because you teleport into a, into a group of monsters. When he hits you, he'll freeze for a tiny bit. And in that tiny bit, it gives you a chance to kind of recover um, and, then, and then make a move, right? Make an action and whatnot. So if there's too many of them around, you're just going to be in trouble. So it's not second way. Like I said, I am the master of the fourth way down here. So it's a little unfortunate. Do we have a little bit of time to read some donations? Go for it, yeah. Awesome. Arcane we have Sanctuary so is a many of them. I'll try to get through as many as I can. We All have right. a $20 donation from Llama's Girlfriend. Keep up the great work, sweetheart. I'm so proud of you and the countless hours of work you've put in to be the caliber of player you are today. So glad you can use your skills to help kick cancer in the butt. Love you. Donation to Runner's Choice. Uh, she'd want me to save the birds. So we'll save the animals with hers. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. $200 anonymous donation in honor of Kevin Kanai, who worked on Diablo 3. Thank you very much for the donation. Kitty Pyre donated $20. Much love, Mr. Llama. Super sad Ryu didn't make it, but that just means he has to come out next year, and that means you both get my intentionally awkward hugs. Have fun there, <laughs> Llama Legend hype. $300 anonymous donation. Thanks to all the runners and all the people behind the scenes for making this happen. Kill the animals. And Narf donated $200. This run is awesome. Keep up the good work. Save Kane, save the barbs, kill the cows. Moo. Moo, 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 moo. moo, 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 moo. The cow level is going to be, for those of you who know the cow level, you're going to love it, of course. For those of you who don't know the cow level, you're going to love it, of course. It is, it's basically just um, some, man, some man in a uh, studio just going moo, 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 just over and over. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And just to give an update, we are less than $200 away from saving the barbarians. So keep those donations coming and they will get saved. And we have about, I'm not sure what my time is at, but I'm guessing probably about 20 to 25 minutes until Barbarians. So, if you want them to be saved. Otherwise, we can just stare at their souls and apologize as we teleport past them. We have a $100 donation from Eerie. AGDQ rules. Diablo 2 rules. Give us a remake, Blizzard. That's something they talked about. And of course, in typical llama fashion, we have the fourth way. So, th like I said, this happens to me so often, I'm just used to it. I would say a majority of my runs, uh, even some of my record runs, have a fourth way. Was chat spamming feels bad, man, when he, they found out? They might have. Oh, I <laughs> I wonder. So this right here, now we're moving on to uh, try and find Daryl. And so we're almost level 18, which is actually really nice. Um, that's the, the, one, the one benefit you could say comes out of um, 
having such a terrible arcane sanctuary. You spend so long in there that you're going to have experience. And so now I can teleport around with the experience here. And there's actually some beetles down here. So I'll spend uh, a little bit of time kind of farming those. And so I'm just going to be looking um, for the Taurus' tomb here. And we'll actually have to go get some mana really quick. So it's, uh, that, is, that is one of the things. It's like, okay, I spent a lot of time down there. Um, that definitely hurts my, my time. But now I have teleport. And just like, just like in uh, Diablo 1, uh, it's actually not the worst thing. I'll actually get some thawing potions as well. So for those of you who have had such trouble with the Duriel fight, and um, you'll know why as soon as you see it if you don't play Diablo 2, um, thawing not potions enough. are actually extremely helpful. It's so, so very helpful in this run. Uh, or in any speed run of any character trying to fight Duriel. Because he does a lot of cold damage, and thawing potions give you plus 50 to cold resistances. And like I said before, you can also stack them, um, so that's very beneficial as well. So the tombs, a lot of times, can be uh, pretty kind of crazy maps. They can be really, really, um, really long and take a long time. Uh, not, not a long time, but they, but they can definitely take uh, a lot more time than you would want to spend on them. And thanks to teleport, I'm able to just kind of jump around and whatnot. And so now I'm Orifice, that's what it's called. That's what it's called. And so now we're going to go ahead and get Duriel um, spawned up. And I'll just fill my belt with potions here, and I'll drink these thawing potions. And now you can see I have 50 cold res. So the reason Duriel is so difficult with a lot of characters is because he does massive damage. If I didn't have that cold res, I probably would have been close to dead just from that shot alone. Um, and you are in this tiny little area, and he also freezes you. So it's a sort of horrible combination of everything, you could say. Tiny area, giant boss, uh, whatnot. But when you just kind of mix all those things uh, together, and you get your, um, whatever you call it, you get your thawing potions going, uh, it's really not too bad. And I guess I should explain that last skill, uh, because that's kind of a huge piece of the game. That last skill that I've been using uh, intermittently is called Static Field. Um, and that is going to, it actually does a percentage of Hello, the breathe. boss monster's health. Uh, or the monster's health, any monster's health. Um, and so it's extremely useful against bosses, right? Because if I were to sit there and just try and do damage just regular, regularly to that, it just wouldn't work, right? I just wouldn't do much damage um, and I would kind of suffer from that. But by being able to static, I'm able to just bring boss monsters down to essentially like 1 HP if I really want to. Um, and it just makes it so much easier for me. So I'm going to go ahead and stash my gold. And I have good gold right now. That's really good. Some runs, you just you can't find anything worth gold. And now I'm actually going to go hire a Merce. And we'll get this guy. So he's going to kind of help me. When I'm teleporting around, he'll be a little bit of a, someone who can just take a little damage. And then later on, he'll also be able to do some damage. Now, one thing that you're, that you're starting to see me do uh, every now and then, so this is a boss group, want to stop and kill it. One thing that you're going to notice me do is open up um, different screens when I'm teleporting. And the reason is because that's going to allow me to teleport a little further in that direction. And you might be wondering how that's happening. And the reason is because if you look at my character, you will note that she is um, she is in the center of the screen. However, oh gosh. However, when I when I open up one of the screens, it pushes her to the side of the screen. And so by doing that, it actually moves her over to the side of the screen, um, and then I can go ahead and teleport a little further. So I use it a little bit in Act Three. Um, in areas like this when I just want to kind of get out. Um, and then I'll use it a lot more in places like Act uh, Act 4 and Act 5. I'm going to be using it all sorts of places. Um, so I'm also, you also will probably note that my, um, I'm kind of teleport walk, teleport walk, right? Uh, I kind of have to bounce between. That's because the mana potions that you get in Act 3 don't give you enough mana to forever teleport. It's unfortunate, but it's just kind of what happens. 
Um, so what you have to do instead, let's see if this will take me anywhere. Ah, well, I didn't think so. Uh, what you have to do instead um, is just teleport and then run a little bit. And then once I get to Act 4 and Act 5, I'll be able to buy better uh, mana potions that'll allow me to. So we're going to have to have a great marsh here. This is also something in the game that can be very um, game changing, I want to say. And what it is, is it, it's if you have a great marsh skip. Uh, and so sometimes the maps in Act 3 are so terribly generated, uh, sometimes the Great Marsh and the, the Flare Jungle, which is the next section I need to go to. Nothing in the Great Marsh is of interest to me. Um, and so sometimes the uh, the next area... Wow. So there's examples of not being able to cast anything because you're stun locked. Uh, sometimes the area is generated and your Flare Jungle is actually attached to the spider... <laughs> the spider cavern. Uh, there's a spider forest. So I don't even have to worry about um, any of that other stuff. And even though that was a lot of junk right there, I'm actually not terribly upset by that because that means there's going to be a lot of experience down here. So, and that's something that I definitely, definitely, definitely want. So I'm going to go ahead and take this stuff home. Um, I'm going to check over here really quickly to see if this is the way. It's not. It might be the waypoint, though, and that might not be bad to get. It's not. not okay. enough mana. Um, so I'll just have to leave safety TPs constantly. So that's something that I just need to like remind myself of by uh, saying it out loud. So I just did. Thank you. Good job, Mr. Lama. And we'll get rid of that. Sure. Probably could have got rid of the other one, actually. But it's okay. We have, that. A, we have a $200 anonymous donation. Save the barbarians. You must. And with that, the barbarians well, shall live saved. to barb another day. All right. There you go, barbs. There you go. <laughs> so this is another area that I, uh, this is one of the more dangerous areas. So at this point, the game really starts to kind of get difficult. Um, in the earlier stages, there's, there's little difficulties here and there, and it's something like, as you get better, um, you know, you, you can die in certain areas, but a lot of times you're going to be decently okay. Uh, but, but some, but I mean, once you get to Act 3, you can just instantly run into some of these guys and just like die instantly. I mean, it's, it's so easy to just b die in about you know, a couple, a like a couple milliseconds or whatever. You don't even see yourself die a lot of times. So I'm gonna set a TP here, and this is going to be once again one of those move forward strats. And let's see if we got faster cast rate. We did not. So that was our last chance. He'll give you a ring when you complete that quest. Um, I was kind of hoping that we could have gotten it there. So we're going to be probably without faster cast rate for this run, um, which is okay. It, it happens. It's not like missing the Talat rune or anything. And that ring is not going to be anything that great, unfortunately. There's not. There's some cert, There's some items that are good, and there's some items um, that just really don't do much for me. And so here I have that waypoint, and I can very quickly uh, just do that, and that takes me right back to this area. What I also want to do at this time is I'm going to go ahead and put my Rao rune in there, so I can keep that tier rune, um, and then it'll allow me to uh, continue to. Uh, have that man per kill while still getting the fire rest. If I had two Rao runes, then I would go ahead and put it in that extra helmet I have. So I can actually go ahead and drop that now. So if I had found another Rao rune somewhere along the way, I would have kept those then. And we have 30 fire res, which is not great. Not great. So when we get to the later stages, we're going to be taking a little bit of damage for sure. When we get to like Act 4 and stuff. But it's something. It's uh, it'll maybe stop us from an instant death and leave us with like five life or ten life, and uh, that's sometimes enough. So down here, uh, level one, and two are are uh, just you always want to go to that left, and then level three, um, there's different set maps. So this is similar to like the Den of Evil, and so I just want to find specific maps, grab that. I didn't find anything. I'll go ahead and take my scepter out, put my brain in. Yes. And so here I want to find three pieces. So I need to find heart, 
brain, an eye, and then actually four pieces, because I have to find the flail too. Um, and so I'm going to get all those pieces and morph them together, and that's going to make, uh, oops. So right here, like, if I were to not have this waypoint, then I would have to go all the way back. But because I have this waypoint, it allows me to kind of skip through a little bit. And once again, we have to be a little careful because this is a little bit of a crowded area. I do not have any TPs left either. As we said, we uh, want to avoid. And there's a Talith. Not that it matters, but it, it's all right to have. So I'm almost at level 20, and that's going to actually be the final level that I'm going to want to get in this game. And I actually don't really need to kill anything else. I'm just kind of killing things a little bit for safety at this point. Uh, but I once I get to level 20, that is all. And the reason is because you need to be level 20 to kill the ancients um, in level uh, in Act 5. Right, so to, to finish the game, essentially, to kill the guys right before the final boss, um, you need to have that. And if you don't have it, then you can't kill them. Uh, or you can kill them, but you won't get the quest completed and you can't finish the game. Um, so level 20 is all that we're going for. But additionally, uh, getting levels later on is extremely difficult. Um, so it's one of those things where the game won't let you get levels uh, beyond your, if you're killing monsters that are too high of a level. So if they're too low or too high of a level, you cannot get much experience at all from them. There's an experience penalty. I believe it's anything five, it's five or 10. I think after five, anything within five levels, you get 100% experience or close to. Um, and then once you get to like 10, it basically becomes uh, terrible. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab um, this shrine over here just for safe, or this waypoint just for safety. And I need to go fill up on TP scrolls because we're going to be facing Mephisto soon. And uh, we should also get more potions here. And we don't want to not have a TP while we're down there. So Travancore, this is going to be where I get my final piece. Um, it can be easy to kind of die to these guys if you get cursed. And of course, there's the fire damage that you're dealing with. And the big thing is when you're trying to just pick up that flail, So morph that together, and I can actually, okay. I can actually telekinesis that if I want to. Put that back up, and switch back. But yeah, so there's, there's, there's an experience penalty, and so monsters in Act 4 and 5, I'm really not going to get a lot of experience from. So it's really not worth even trying to kill, or killing anything more than needs to be killed. So here we're just going to go Not towards uh, Mephisto. And Mephisto hits extremely hard. Extremely hard. As do all of these guys, apparently. Um, and will we find the way up over here? Doesn't look like it. No. Okay. Oh, will find the waypoint. Once again, Marathon safe, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use this to try and just teleport over here. And, okay, there it is. So, map was playing with me a little bit. And that experience shrine, unfortunately, is uh, not great, because I don't, I don't really need experience anymore at this point. So I'll go ahead and just do that. And I'm gonna actually go ahead and grab my Merce really quickly, because he's, uh, he's actually quite useful way. against Mephisto. I'm going to TP on top of him, and I'm going to try and static him down. And as you can see, he, uh... He gets hard. Man. Every one of attacks, of his attacks, just does so much damage. A lot of the other classes actually have a cheese here where you can basically stay out of his range and just whittle right. him down slowly. So that's actually awesome drops too. 
Um, so yeah, so like you were saying, a lot of them, what you can do is what's called the moat trick. You just get him, uh, you lure him over to that edge, kind of where he was standing, and then you go on the other side of the moat. Uh, you just kind of cheese him. So at this point, I don't need my cube anymore. I don't really care for that stone because I have enough gold. So I'm just going to fill up on potions. And I'll want to resurrect my Merce again. So I'll go ahead and actually do that really quickly while I put my gold away. And so this is going to allow me to have my Merce to kind of go around with. Um, and I'm going to give him a weapon now because I'm actually going to need him um, to help me kill some of the... Uh, some of the bosses in the Chaos Sanctuary. I'll put that to good use. Equip them, and we'll go ahead and finish out with our potions. And you can actually feed him potions. That's what I was trying to do during the Mephisto fight, but Mephisto just kills him too quickly. So you can actually feed him like health potions um, as he's as he's like taking damage and, and whatnot. And so at this point, I'm now going to be um, just looking for that exit uh, to the next kind of maps. And here you'll be able to really see uh, kind of how quickly you can just burst through Act 4. This is the fastest act um, in, the, in the game whatnot. Uh, and so those two maps were kind of preset. They had preset randomness um, in where it could be. And this map is just going to be completely random. Um, and so having to find the uh, waypoint and the entrance to the next level. There it is. Uh, that's just kind of completely random there. So now I'm going to be moving towards um, getting uh, to Diablo's Sanctuary, right? Chaos Sanctuary. And so I want to constantly be trying to move towards this right side. If possible. And there we go. There's River of Flame. And just like that, we're already at the Chaos Sanctuary. So that's kind of a really... Uh, like I said, just really, really quick when you have to like go around collecting pieces and stuff. It makes the game just so much faster. Oof. So that right there is an example of I do not have a uh, faster cast rate. But here you can see me using uh, my faster hit recovery to kind of beat these monsters. And so here's where I'm. Here's one of the monster groups that's really, really helpful to have him for this group, and then the next group, um, because he's able to just really quickly tank those monsters. So all I have to do here, oh gosh, all I have to actually do is, uh, oh jeez, um, is 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 kill the boss monsters that each seal opens up. So whenever I open a seal. Three of the seals uh, will release a boss monster, one at each section. And that'll be uh, something that I just want to find really quick. And, and just kill them. Uh, ah, darn. So that happens. That's fine. Uh, like I said, I I'm pretty close right here. So it's something where I can just go ahead and go refill my potions. And, uh, and then we'll just kind of move back in there. And I don't lose any gold in multiplayer. You lose well. I, I would lose any gold I was holding. In multiplayer, you lose uh, some gold from your stash as well. But in single player, you do not. So that right there is an example of me not having much fire resistance. It's kind of where I'd said before, I'll probably die in Act in Act Four or Five. Um, it's because I don't have those Rao runes. So with those Rao runes, it would give me a lot better chance to kind of do some damage there. And my Merce here is actually very helpful as well. One um, other problem that happens during this is they tend to curse you a lot, which just makes you take absurd amounts of damage. Right. So I kind of want to clear the areas out before the bosses, uh, especially without that much um, fire resistances and stuff. So we'll go ahead and spawn that, do that, and there's going to be our boss. And as you'll see, I take a lot of damage here. Did I have a safety TP up? I'm not sure I did. We'll put one right in the middle of them. This right here is called having them on a leash. At least that's the term I've given it. Um, essentially, bo boss minions don't want to leave their boss leader. And so you can essentially have it where if the leader is far enough away, they'll come up to you and then they'll head back because they're too far away. 
Um, and so it's a nice way to be able to kind of deal with some of them without having to uh, take too much damage or, or anything like that. They'll just kind of hang there. And so when you get to like hell mode and stuff like that, kind of the later difficulties, that is definitely extremely useful to have. I need mana. So Diablo is another guy uh, that can quickly put you to death um, with what what he has is a lightning physical attack. A lot of people think it's actually fire. Is that right? Is that there is fire? We'll see if he actually uses it. There it is. So it's actually half lightning, half physical damage. And of course, as you can see, if it hits you, you just lose all of your life. And there is a quick kill on him. And that's not too bad at all. Move that over there. And go ahead and grab a couple things. Not that I really need the gold, but I'll go ahead and keep the gold. Um, and there you can see Act 4, even with the death right there, still moves pretty dang quickly. Uh, so it's 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 uh, pretty fun. I, I really enjoy the later stages of the game. Kind of gets a little annoying early on when you're just having to run around in these long Act 1 and Act 2 areas. And then if you find bad maps, or like you fourth way arcane like I did, and it's like, all right, well, maybe I have to reset again. Um, it can be a little annoying. But in Act 4, you just kind of fly. And same with Act 5 here. So Act 5, like I said, now I'm level 20, so I'm good on that. Um, I'll go ahead and just fly on my way to the end, with an exception of making a quick pick stop to save some Barbarian 16 guys. Um, and one thing to also note, you'll know that I'm you'll note that I'm buying potions in Act 4 a lot of the time. I actually won't need to anymore. Um, but marathon safe. Uh, but you'll you'll note that I'm buying potions in Act 4 a lot of the time. And the reasoning for that is actually potions in Act 5 cost twice twice the amount until you do that first quest, which was that guy I just passed by, I don't know if you saw him. Uh, Shank the Overseer. So until you kill Shank, run home. Until you kill Shank, you're free. Um, you're not going to be able to get those potions for the same price. Uh, but once you once you kill him, then they'll drop down to Act 4 prices. And that right there should be our save barbarians. Congratulations, Barbs. You live to fight another day. So, like I said, it's not it's not too much of a time killer, but you know, if you're if you're going for a world record, you don't want to stop at that point and be like, all right, hold up, let me save the barbs. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop some safety TPs, um, and now down here you can go from hero to zero really quick, uh, just with some quick like moon lords or death lords just hitting you very easily, um, and so you have to be a little careful. And so I'm gonna try and. Uh, Play it a little safe with my teleports. Now oh, there's there's a waypoint. So I'm going to try and be a little safe so I can get those waypoints and things like that. Uh, just in case I die, it's not too bad. So once again, just kind of teleporting through a lot of this. Act 5 doesn't have any of those consumable things, or not consumable, um, you know, the heart and the brain and all those sorts of things. I don't know why I thought those were consumable. Uh, but yeah, so, so you don't have to really deal with all those. So you just kind of want to find uh, the Ancients, kill the Ancients, and then travel around, find find Bale, um, and kill Bale and all of his minions. So those are examples of those Moon Lords that you want to avoid. So at this point, I should have hopefully enough potions. If not, oh well, it happens. The ancient. We can reset them. So here I'm feeding him potions and having him tank for me while I static, and then I'm going to uh, get rid of that guy, and I wanted to get Korlik in that same bit, but that's okay. And so now I'll go ahead and face Maddock. And we'll keep those potions. That was actually a very um, nice Ancients. Some t so the Ancients spawn with random items. And so sometimes the Ancients will spawn and they'll be able to like one-shot you essentially. Uh, and that's always terrible. Other times they'll spawn with like cold enchant and things like that. Um, and that can also be miserable and, and just all sorts of horrible things that can happen. 
Uh, so here, like I said, I have so much gold I can shop here, but you can see that these cost 900 apiece when they're only 450. Um, so it drained my gold pretty quickly, actually. And Worldstone Keep is, once again, kind of like the catacombs. You just do not know. Oh, there we go. You just look for that red. And that's going to be kind of your indicator of where you need to go. And level 2 is similar to the catacombs. And that I'm going to want to be searching. And there's a waypoint. So I, now I know I want to search to um, the right of that waypoint. So I'm instantly going to start heading towards this way. And there we go. There's level 3. And then we'll find hopefully level 4 here soon. And for those who don't know the name, uh, Chris Wilson, which was the donated name, there's some Death Hordes. Uh, he is actually one of the Diablo 2 fans that created Path of Exile, um, which is actually a pretty cool game. Pretty cool game. Um, so it, it runs, it, it's, it's kind of like an updated version of Diablo 2. Ooh, man. So those are Death Lords. They also cannot be frozen with Frost Nova. Everything in here can basically kill you almost in a blink of an eye. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so this is actually a pretty bad throne room. Sometimes the throne room will have literally zero monsters in it, which is always the best. You walk in and you just say, "Oh, sweet, nothing to, uh, nothing I have to deal with." Other times, you have monsters galore, like this, and there's not a ton of these death lords. Um, but even one is plenty enough for me to say, I'll go get a couple more health pots. And we'll go ahead and probably burn through the rest of our gold just about here. Save a tiny bit. And a lot of times you end up actually burning through your gold, and you just end up selling items. So as the game goes on, you're just constantly, or as you're finishing Bale, or the throne room, or whatever it is, um, you're just constantly selling everything you have, until you basically end the game with like one item left or something. So yeah, this throne room is a little annoying, um, and there's Bale's laughter, which means the throne room is clear. And you might be saying, but it's not clear. There's one dude left. Yes, but there's like, this line is the dividing line before he decides it's clear. And that'll actually be important a little later on. Uh, and I'll let you guys know why, or I'll show you why, I guess, when we get to that point. But yeah, the difficulty within Bale's throne room, I mean, there's many difficulties, but one of the difficulties is... Um, the damage and the faster hit recovery uh, just isn't that great. So when you, I had like that many of those little harpy things, it made it extremely difficult for me to not be hit. And whenever I would get hit, I'd go into that um, sort of, you know, uh, my hit recovery mode, and uh, and just wouldn't be wouldn't be that fun. Uh, great time. So here, this third pack has a has a lightning enchanted boss. And remember, like I said, we want. You know, I gotta find him. That's, that's fine, that's fine. I actually wanted to almost die there because I wanted to get health back, though it's not going to. Let me pick up my body. Um, but here, what I'm going to do, uh, this is actually some death strats, is what you use for the other guys. Um, for the sorcerers, you can always teleport back. I'm just going to let my character die out here. And he'll go ahead and chase his, uh, his boss, and that'll leave us uh, nice and easy right next to the boss here. And so this fourth, this fourth wave, I can actually kill. Um, it will be a little difficult because they do have fire damage. And as I uh, kind of noted before, I don't have a ton of fire resist. So I'm just gonna have to be a little bit careful. And then this last boss group is absolutely terrible. So I'm just going to do um, sort of that death strat again, except I'm going to try and not die. But So on, on a character that doesn't have teleport, what you simply do is you'll drag them, you'll die in here, leave your body in here, and then you'll drag the bosses to the outside, any of the ones that you don't want to fight, such as these ones. Um, and you'll just drag them out, and right now they should all be out. That's far enough. 
and that triggers his laughing, uh, which means we should be able to go hopefully kill Bale, and time will end when Bale dies. So Bale, once again, is actually a pretty easy kill until he does wow. that. Wow. So he, he can spawn a clone, uh, and the clone can do all of his spells. It does take extra damage. Oh, yeah. Ooh. All right, that's fine. That's fine. So low fire and cold res has made those a little difficult. And that is it. So that is Bale Dead. <laughs> what did we end up with? The last what? of the three has fallen. Oh, gosh. It's a little slow. A little slow. So now I'm going to go ahead and head towards the cows. I figured it might be somewhere around there, but that's alright. Uh, so now I'm going to head towards the cows here, um, and I will be uh, going through that, trying to figure out how to kill the cow king. Cow king is actually lightning enchanted. So we may have to like grab our murs after we kill everything else, and uh, do some sort of mass frost nova strategy or something like that. Um, so what we actually want to do now is quit the game. And then go back in. And the reason for that is um, we've now that we've seen Kane, we essentially have to. I think it was this way. Now that we've seen Kane, uh, we essentially have to uh, go back and reset the game so it's like we didn't see him, because Kane is of course trapped in here. And how how are we going on that? What have we decided? Is Kane is oh, Kane he saving? He is to be saved. He is to be saved. All right. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and, uh... All right. We'll let you out. We'll go ahead and save Kane, and then we'll go over here and get Wurt's leg. Teasing him almost. Oh, you gotta, you gotta tease him a little bit. Uh, and so now I have this. I can put... Oh, I forgot my cube. I can go... The trap should give me a cube again. Normally I don't need the cube. Welcome. Somebody should remind me. Crap. Um, so I'll have to go get another cube actually really quickly. Let's see if the trap will drop it really quick. While you're doing that, we can sure. yeah, knock go out ahead. a couple donations here. $200 from Chain Rexon. Love watching my favorite game of all time being destroyed. Awesome job. Can't wait for the cow level. $20 from Nass Pass. Moo along llama cow level height love the games love the cause love you all keep it up okay. $100 right. yeah, go ahead oh sorry no, no you, you go ahead okay $100 from Moshu gun I've been donating since I heard about AGDQ both my parents have had cancer I lost my father to it a few years ago and we just got confirmation that my mother has breast cancer for the second and hopefully the last time let's save the people from cancer and let's save the barbarians and save Deckard Kane. Thank you very much for your donation. $50 from Seridica. Uh-oh. 15 years later and Diablo 2 is taking over my life again. <laughs> so that right there would have actually been an awesome drop for me to find earlier in the run. That gives 20 faster run walk, uh, which is, of course, super nice. Okay, so now that we have that, now we can go ahead and not put that in there. Um, we can make the cow level. So the way the cow level kind of came about was people believed there was a cow level in Diablo 1, um, and there was no cow level. And they kind of hinted at that with uh, Diablo, or with StarCraft, there was the cheat, right? There is no cow level. Oh, jeez. No. <laughs> and cows do a lot of damage, especially extra fast cows. Moo. Um, and and so 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 they hinted at that, but then they went ahead and in uh, Diablo 2, they decided to go ahead and create one. So there are a lot of cows, um, and they 
<laughs> they, t <laughs> they, uh, they just have great noises. But they are absolutely deadly. Absolutely deadly. So you don't really want to get hit by them. And the Cow King um, does exist. And if you kill the Cow King, you can actually never open the Cow level again. Uh, so a lot of people, an old strat that kind of used to happen, or an old thing that people used to do is they would do Cow Runs. And so you'd have to go, and you'd have to go... Um, just, you know, somebody would make the game, and they would open it up, and then you would go in here, kill everything but the Cow King, and then uh, move on. But then sometimes you always had that one guy... I just had that one guy who would go over and kill the Cow King when nobody was looking. And then all of, or who, I, th I think it's everybody, or maybe it's whoever opened it. I can't quite remember. Um, wouldn't be able to create that anymore. I think it's everybody who gets the, who has the quest. Wouldn't be able to uh, get the cows, or yeah, open the cow level anymore in that act. So you, you can open it um, in a, there's the Cow King. Another lightning enchant. That overtime potion, though. Right. Diablo 1 confirmed better. <laughs> move, no, move. That's probably not the safest teleport. We're good. <laughs> so we're going to go get some more potions here. Maybe we got a faster cast rate in those. No. What do you need? Just not we have ahead. a $200 anonymous donation. We always save the animals. Every time we save the animals. Let's kill them for once. <laughs> Seems appropriate right now as we're killing cows. It does, it does. So I can go ahead and go through this way. Um, and I'll just try and clear out you know, a, lot, a lot of the cows here. What not. those dollars to work and you really can never have too much cow I mean that's the, that's the Will Ferrell set so we have a $20 donation from poison that I could use the audience's help on on the count of three everyone give me a long moo one two three moo that's awesome. pretty good that's pretty good And so this is something that I'll actually use in a hell run. This is the fastest way to get to level 25. Um, so I'll actually go through and do about two, maybe three cow runs if needed. Um, because there's just, there really is no faster way to get there. Uh, it's such a, it's, it's, it's a very kind of tricky point for experience. But cows actually give very good experience. And they also have pretty good drops. So you can get a lot of gold from different things. You can get, uh, these chests can actually be pretty good in their drops. All sorts of things. So if you if you watch a hell run, which takes about five to six hours, um, you'll get to see a, little, a lot more cow killing. But you'll also see me probably die in there to some cows at some point because, like I said, it, it's one of those where you have to be very kind of safe in your teleports. Like you saw me opening my screens before when I was teleporting. Here I'm not doing that because if you teleport into a group of cows, you're just dead. There's absolutely no way. Yeah, cows are no push over. Oh. No. Oh. Oh. finish that. Oops. No. And we'll go ahead and head towards the Cow King here. Oh, wow. wow. We have a $200 donation from Dr. Love X. Moo! Kill the cows and save the barbarians. Love what you're doing. You are amazing. Much love. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> that was my best dying cow. That was a really good dying cow. <laughs> Not too bad at all. So I'm going to go ahead and get just I a couple more potions. I'm going to go get my Merce as well. And we're going to see uh, what we can do to kill uh, the, uh, the Cow King here. We have $150 from Senny. Got to donate during one of my favorite series of all time. Save Kane and good luck. 
Thank you very much for your donation. Thank you, thank you. Oh, that king is just not gonna die, is he? Yeah, the power definitely tips in their favor. It's terrible jokes. <laughs> The cows are booing you. They're not booing. <laughs> oh, wow. <They're> booing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, let's see what we can see what we can do here. Hello again. Uh, Inferno, man. We got a $50 donation. Hey, Llama, I'm Go Waffle here. I just wanted to say that it's amazing to see you running at AGDQ, and I've been super excited to see you run all week. I took a day off just to watch you. Put this donation to Runner's Choice because llamas are amazing and should always get their way. Also, don't die. Hashtag rip to get ripped. Love it. Um, oh, jeez. Is there any, is there any, are there any, uh, yeah, thanks, Captain. <laughs> we'll go ahead and kill the animals because we're, you know, we're killing all the cows right now. We'll go ahead with that. So, yeah, so that is that. That is the cow run. That's Diablo 2. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And, uh... <laughs> all right. Thank you, Mr. Llama. Thank you, Funk Master. An awesome way to to bring in Diablo into the AGDQ block. Hopefully we'll get to see it again here sometime in the near future. So up next, we are gonna have a quick rebroadcast of the Yoshi's Island race for anyone who might have missed it, followed by Pokemon Yellow. All right, we'll try to catch up on a couple of donations here before, before we get to the VOD. $100 anonymous donation. Used to run a private D2 server, and every time I'd reset, everyone would rush to level 50-plus overnight. Really impressed to see players continue to demolish this game so